Thank you, man. Appreciate right. you. Hello. Here we go. Thanks, everyone. First, thanks, my friends. Uh, my name is Luis Augusto Sara. I'm a former designer. I work as a designer for around 16 years professionally. And I just. Okay. You want to just sit down? Oh, yeah, I mean, sure. we got Let's sit down. Your friends, right? Everybody's friends? All right, so yeah, let's. All right, there we go. That's better. Right. Introduce yourself. Hi. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? So. Okay. Awkward silence. I'm not going. Okay, so I work as a designer for 16 years. I met cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin, the, for the first time in 2011 when I found Silk Road and I wanted to purchase some things there and I, I knew that I had to buy a Bitcoin to, to buy things there. So I bought a Bitcoin for $180. I bought two Bitcoins in 2011. Back in, and then 2017, one of my best friends told me about Bitcoin again, and then I jump into it, but I jump it very hard. I start to understand because since Bitcoin, it's an open source code, you can go on GitHub and understand how it works. And I'm, I've been a developer for the past, you know, 20 years since I'm, I was 16 years old. I'm 36 today. Being, you know, coding HTML, CSS, PHP, Node.js, React, all that shit. Sorry, my language. And so I started to understand the Bitcoin. I saw decentralization, you know, I saw how it works, and I started to study more. I bought a mining rig, I started to develop mining pools, and I started to meet a lot of people around. And that was 2018. To, uh, 2019, we you know, we came to the bear market. Uh, and then, sorry, I'm gonna be up because I like to move. So then, at the end of 2020, in September, one of my friends, designer from Brazil, he introduced me to NFT. He showed me NFTs. When I saw NFT for the first time, the first day I remember design and blockchain, what I have been studying before, you know, for, the, for many years. I worked with John McAfee for two years on LuxCore. I worked with many people. Um, back in the days on projects. I was in the rush to build the first DX, you know, with LuxCoin, and then came Uniswap, SushiSwap. But I was in the rush to build the first DX. There was a lot of story back in the days. So then in 20, September 2020, I, we created the first Brazilian community called CryptoArt BR. There was a, it was a designers, a group of designers and artists trying to understand what is blockchain and what is NFT. So since I knew what was NFT, uh, since I knew what was blockchain, I, I was studying before, I started to jump on Discord voice to all my artist friends, all my designers friends, and explain them what is a smart contract, how the market works, how you, you know, transfer your money to Ethereum, to Bitcoin, exchange, or whatever. Start to, you know, and then I start to meet more artists and more people, more people interested in create the NFTs. So. On the first side, we see a lot of uh, creators, but we don't see the buyers yet. So we start to build our own project and start to go for the buyers. How do you build a project? How do you start a project? So from my perspective, by the way, I have developed over 50 different projects. I have sold $40 million plus in projects. So I have projects with 5,000 ETH in volume. I have projects with 30,000 ETH in volume on OpenSea. So I have a lot of projects. This is, for me, it's a recipe. Uh, this is what I have been doing. It's, it's based on my experience. So the past, uh, so how do you start, okay? For me, there's three ways. The end of any point, NFT project, no matter who you are, no matter what you say, the end, it's money. You're always trying to get funds, okay, to build what you want, to build, to do what you want. You have plans for that. Of course, it must be legit plans to do with that money. I'm not saying that you want to build, make money to put in your pocket. Not pocket, not, that's not the case. But you are inside the market that's getting the hype. And since it's a, it was my second bull run and I knew that was a hype, we know NFT, we had a big hype on 2021 end of 2021, beginning of 2022, we know today the market is down. 
there's not, not much people buy NFTs, but back in the days, people wanted to buy NFTs and I wanted to sell it. There's nothing wrong with it. That's why I have 50 different projects. What's the key? There's three ways you, you, you develop a project. You build a project to sell for a community. You build a project by an idea that you believe in you and you want to build that idea or you want to sell it. You build a derivative. You get a hype from another project. That's how the market works. 90% of the projects that sells, it goes these three ways. They sell it for a community. They sell it for community, I would say, a group. Okay, let's say an alpha group that wants to create their own project. You create a project by its own idea, board the ape, its own idea. It's a PFP. They sold PFP. They promised it. PFPs, and that's what I promise in most of my projects. PFPs, you want to buy NFT, I'm offering you an NFT, nothing else. Under promise, over delivery, that's the key. So, how do you start? Let's say you have an idea, like Bored Ape. Um, you get an artist, of course, you need an artist to draw your assets, okay? If you want to create, then you have to think about it. You got to look at the market, think about it. how many of my collection I want to create. I want to create 5,000 units, I want to create 7,000 units, I want to create 10,000 tokens. It depends. It depends the market, it depends your idea, it depends how much you think your team is capable to sell it. By the way, I believe there is three big pillars on a project. Art, development, and sales. If you don't have one of those three pillars, you're not going to be able to succeed on your project. Again, that's based on my experience. Uh, so, you have the artist, okay? You want to create a 5,000 collection. How do you start with it? I want to create, let's say, I'm going to example a Bored Ape because everyone knows Bored Ape. It's a monkey with a, a humanized uh, characteristics, okay? So, if you want to create 10,000 different units because all the 10,000 are different, you have to create a lot of assets. What is assets? So let's say body ape. You have each asset, I would say, let's say a body. Blue body, white body, red body, green body, purple body. Each one of those bodies is one bodies is one asset. Okay, it's a plain body, it's just the body, just the shape of the body. You want to create different faces, happy face, sad face, crying face. Each one of those faces, again, it's a PNG that you create based on the body. So if you want to create a 10,000 collection, you need at least 150 and 170 different assets. One body, it's one's assets. You have 10 different bodies, you have about 10 different assets. So you make categories. I'm going to make a body. I'm going to make a background. I'm going to make uh, clothes. I'm going to make, those are all the categories are different traits. That's the traits that you see on the NFT, on the metadata when you look at OpenSea, let's say. And that's create the rarity for your entire collection. After, let's say, you design 20 bodies, 20 faces, that's 40 assets. 20 backgrounds, 60 assets. I'm going to keep those three to make it simple. After that, you need to make a rarity for those assets, which means to create the final image, you merge those different assets together. So let's say I'm going to take body A with face A and background A. Body A, face A, background B. So we have back body A, face A, background C. All those, um, what's the word? All those um, variations, you know, it's based on a calculation of the rarity. So when I take those assets and I wanna merge them, I also, tell them how the percentage I want them to be generated. So let's say I want this body, which is a gold body. When you generate, by the way, we generate those final images based on a Python code. So we have, we develop our own Python code that we take those full assets and turn into a final image, okay? So we give the rarity of those assets. So the gold body is gonna be 5%. So once I run my Python code, to generate the final assets, just 5% of that 
specifically body, gold body, is going to be on the final 10,000. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit quicker. Yeah, I was going to say we have like five minutes left, and I, I really okay. wanted to be able to talk to you about the, um, the actual technology behind the NFTs. Like yeah, the actual technology is, of course, based on a simple website. It can be based on Node.js or based on React. And you have, of course, the Web3 integration with, like, say, EtherGS. It's uh, one of the integrations that we use when we're creating a website, React. That Web3 integration, that website, basically talks to the contract. How does it work as my contract? It's simple. Let's say a collection, NFT collection. It's like a regular contract. Look, I'm going to write a contract here. There will be 10,000 units and 10,000 units only. Each unit costs 0 0.01 ETH. That's my contract. If you want to buy, you send 0 0.01 to that contract. The contract automatically is going to send one token to you. That's how it works. That's the base. There is nothing. Of course, we have other functions that you know allows people to transfer NFTs from one wallet to another wallet. There's functions that you know let OpenSea uh, knows that you want that specific. That you want the, the, the royalties, uh, so you can add that on contract there. But the base of the contract is that it will be 5,000 or 10,000 units, and that's the cost. Whoever send that money to the contract, the contract is going to send you back one unit, which is one token, which is one NFTs. How the images are related to those tokens on the smart contract. Also, it's a function on the smart contract that says, look, each unit, each token, each NFT is going to be related to this image. So you actually tell the contract where he's going to grab those images, which most of the projects, a lot of people believe it's immutable, which is not because there's a function on the contract that you actually can change this metadata. You can change those images. 80 or 90% of my contracts, if I want to change all the images from the collection right now, I can, since I am the owner of the contract, I can call a function on the contract to change everything. So not everything is what they say, OK? <coughs> Once you have all the 10,000 assets, those assets, good? Oh, no, go, go ahead. Uh. You have those 10,000 assets. You know, usually we use IPFS. What's IPFS? Imagine like a hard drive that you store the images, but it's decentralized, OK? It's stored in a lot of different computers. Once you put the images, those 10,000 tokens, the 10,000 images, sorry, these 10,000 images, besides the image, I forgot a point. That's why 15 minutes is too long. It, it's, it's good, guys. Uh, I think we can all agree we're among friends right now. We've had a, uh, a pretty long week. <laughs> but um, if anything, I think it's important that we at least be able to have these conversations. And honestly, thank you guys for coming. Give them a round of applause, like, uh, applause for you guys. Thanks a lot, thank guys. You. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. It's really important for, for us. Yeah. 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 But uh, if anything, we have, a, we have a question in the back. Yeah, I'm going to be very quick to finalize. You send the 10,000 image and the metadata. What's the metadata? It's the file that says what the image is. So if that image has a black background or a blue background or a blue body, the metadata, which is another file, is going to say what the image is. So I have the image number one, the metadata, which is a text file number one. It's related to the token number one on the contract. Once the contract deploy, send it to the owner that purchased the number one, you know, that number one token is going to reach the number one image and the number one metadata, which is on IPFS. That's the basics. That's the basics. You have the website that talks to the contract. The contract knows what images he's going to show. The contract knows how much people are supposed to send it. And if you send the money to the contract, the contract is going to send it back to you. Once it reaches 10,000, the contract is going to close itself because you said it's 10,000 there. It cannot be 10,001. It's immutable. That's the beauty. That's the reality. That's the decentralization. And I do believe a lot. Just to finalize, the next wave is def the next hype is definitely Web3 gaming. I've been focused a lot on gaming. I've been focused a lot on layer two blockchains like Arbitrum 
or uh, immutable X or even, um, I forgot the name. Anyway, no, yeah, I said Arbitrum, there's another one, I forgot the name, but we've been focused a lot, especially to get rid of the high gas fees, you know, and those blockchains have been a lot reliable lately. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be here, I'll be outside. If you want to talk about projects, how you want to build a project, I'll be the most honest guy to you. You know, I'll be very open. I don't charge people, and I don't want to be your advisor. <laughs> Thank right. you so Thank much, you. everyone. Thank you, Luis. Thank you, Ace. Give it up. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does I'm anyone sorry. have any questions? We, we're out of time. Oh. If you, so thank you very much. If you want to have questions, please meet these guys right outside yeah, the we'll door. Yeah, we'll be hanging that out would be, if you guys want to talk. That's, the way to, that's the way to not be in a rush. Right, thank, thank you, you. guys. <laughs>